Considering Imperial Japan fought for the Axis in World War II, you might assume Japan had strong relations with the other Axis powers. You might also assume that Japanese soldiers fought and died alongside other Axis soldiers, but things weren't as simple as that. Relations between the Axis powers were complicated, flimsy even. There's also little to no evidence of Japanese troops fighting alongside fellow Axis troops. In this video, we're going to discuss Japan's relations with its Axis allies during the Second World War, focusing on its relationship with Germany and the operations in which these two military powers interacted. In November 1936, Germany and Japan signed the anti comintern Pact, which Japan took as an alliance against the USSR. Because Japan had been fighting a border war against the Soviets since Japan invaded Manchuria in 1932, the pact was a big deal for the Japanese. But Hitler had other plans in mind. About a month before the start of World War II, Germany signed a pact with the USSR. This was the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, and basically stipulated that Germany and Japan would sandwich Poland and split the nation down the middle in two. Still clashing with the Soviets on the mainland, Japan was not happy about this new pact and distanced itself from Germany as a result. That was until the signing of yet another pact, this time between Germany, Japan and Italy in September 1940, the Tripartite Pact. In essence, this marked a loose defensive alliance between the two states, an alliance intended to dissuade the United States from marching to war. Of course, by 1937, Japan wasn't as interested in waging war against the USSR as it was in utterly defiling China. Busy butchering millions of Chinese in China, the Japanese lacked the military power to wage a concurrent war against the Soviets. Can you guess what they did? That's right they signed another pact, the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact. And it seems this pact resulted in Hitler getting a taste of his own medicine because during his invasion of the USSR, he invited Japan to invade the Soviet Union from the east and Japan said no. Now, it was the Japanese, not Hitler, who had other plans in mind. Without first informing Hitler, the Japanese launched a surprise attack against the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor ending over 2,300 lives and waking a sleeping giant. In light of the attack on Pearl Harbor, what now did Hitler think of the Japanese? And what did the Japanese think of Hitler and the Nazis? Overall, Hitler seemed pretty chuffed about the attack. In his words, We can't lose the war at all. We now have an ally which has never been conquered in 3,000 years. Later, in 1945, before he took his own life, Hitler shared his thoughts on the Japanese in terms of their race, writing, I have never regarded the Japanese as inferior to ourselves. Indeed, I believe the more steadfast the Japanese remain in their pride of race, the easier I shall find it to get on with them. However, this isn't to say that Hitler's opinion of the Japanese people was always positive. In August 1941, for instance, he referred to them as lacquered half monkeys who need to feel the whip. As for the Japanese perspective, it's difficult to find concrete evidence about it, but this December 1940 statement by Japanese Foreign Minister Yosuke Matsuka offers some insight. I am the man responsible for the alliance with Hitler, but nowhere have I promised that we would carry out his anti-Semitic policies in Japan. This is not simply my personal opinion, it is the opinion of Japan, and I have no compunction about announcing it to the world. Pacts and perspectives aside, Germany and Japan largely fought different wars. This was mostly due to the physical distance between the theatres in which they fought. The Germans waged war primarily in Europe and North Africa, and the Japanese primarily in China and the Pacific. While German soldiers were falling to starvation and Red Army bullets in Stalingrad, the Western Allies were overrunning the Japanese in the Guadalcanal campaign. While the Allied Operation Overlord invasion force was plowing through the German lines in occupied France, the US Marines were shooting the Japanese into a corner on Saipan. As far as we're aware, the Germans and Japanese never operated side by side, at least on land. 
In the Indian Ocean, however, they participated in a number of joint operations. Among such operations were the Yanagi missions, where Japanese submarines transported important cargo and information to German bases and then left with cargo and information provided by the Germans in turn. In April 1942, for instance, the Japanese Type B-1 submarine I-30 left Kure, Japan with a cargo of mica and shellac, as well as plans for their Type 91 aerial torpedo. The submarine delivered these items to the town of Lorient in German-held France, then departed with 50 Enigma machines and plans for a Würzburg radar, among other things. In December 1943, the Japanese submarine I-29 departed Singapore, also en route to Lorient. On the way, she was refueled by a German supply ship in the Indian Ocean. She also rendezvoused with the German submarine U-518 and took three German technicians aboard. On the 10th of March, following an unsuccessful Allied air attack off the Spanish coast, I-29 picked up an escort group composed of two German destroyers, two German torpedo boats, and five Junkers fighter bombers. Despite this, the Allies came for I-29 again the following day, destroying one German plane but failing to blast open the Japanese sub. The Germans tried to transport cargo to their Japanese allies as well. The U-boat U-234, for example, departed Norway for Japan in March 1945 while carrying over 1,200 tons of uranium oxide and an ME-262 jet fighter, among other things. It's possible this uranium was intended for the creation of nuclear weapons in Japan. Either way, Germany surrendered before U-234 could make it to its destination. While Vichy France never formally joined the Axis powers, Vichy French forces fought alongside the Japanese in the Battle of Madagascar in 1942. This British-led offensive was executed, at least in part, to deny Madagascar's ports to the Japanese. On the Japanese side of things, the Imperial Navy's commitment to the defense of Vichy-held Madagascar was largely the result of meetings between Kriegsmarine Vice Admiral Kurt Fricker and Japanese Vice Admiral Naokuni Nomura. During their second meeting, Nomura agreed to send four submarines, two midget submarines, and one reconnaissance plane to the island. During the ensuing battle, one of the Japanese midget subs loosed two torpedoes, inflicting heavy damage upon the Royal Navy's battleship, HMS Ramiles, and sinking a 7,000-ton oil tanker. Ultimately, the crew of one of the midget submarines beached the craft and ran inland to await pickup at that designated point. Unfortunately for them, some Royal Marines operated on the island were clued into the crew's presence after the crew purchased food at a village near Cape Amber. The Marines sniffed them out and gunned them down. The other Japanese midget sub was lost at sea, and the corpse of one of the crewmen washed ashore soon after. At the end of the day, the Japanese contribution made little difference. Madagascar fell to the Allies on the 6th of November 1942, after six months of fighting. So far, it's clear that the Germans and Japanese had very little to do with each other on the battlefields of World War II. Things could have gone differently, however, with Hitler even making tentative plans to link up with the Japanese on the Eurasian continent. We're not sure if Japan knew about this operation, but it bore the codename Fall Orient. In essence, the Germans would advance through North Africa and the Middle East, and the Japanese would advance through Burma. They would then converge on India to deal the British a finishing blow. This operation would only take place after Hitler had toppled the Soviet Union. Fortunately for India, German defeats at Stalingrad and El Alamein nipped Fall Orient in the bud. In the words of American historian Norman J. W. Goda, the Axis lacked common statements of purpose, common grand strategic conceptions and planning, and even in some cases, common enemies. Rather, it was a collection of predators, none of which trusted one another. But what do you think? How might the war have differed if Germany and Japan had fought alongside each other on the battlefield and coordinated more? Can you think of any examples of German and Japanese soldiers fighting or even just working together? What about other Axis soldiers? And lastly, do you know of any concrete evidence regarding the Japanese perspective on Hitler and the Nazis? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below.